Electric motors have two main parts, the stator, which is the stationary part, and the rotor, which is the rotating part. Almost all EVs have permanent magnet rotors, which are exactly what they sound like, permanent magnets. The number of magnets in the rotor determines the number of poles that the motor has. This rotor is two pole because it has a single magnet with a north and a south pole. And there will always be an even number of poles because every magnet brings two. Most EVs use four or six pole motors. As we all learnt at school, opposite magnetic poles attract, which means if there's any other magnetic fields nearby, our rotor's going to try and rotate to line up with the other magnetic field. Which brings us back to the stator. All EVs use three-phase motors, which means the stator contains three sets of copper windings, wound in a special way to allow us to create a magnetic field inside the bore. By precisely controlling the current flowing through these three windings, we can choose how strong this magnetic field is and in what direction it's pointing. This is what the inverter's for. It takes power from the battery and uses it to create the exact magnetic field we need inside the stator. Back to the rotor, and as I mentioned a minute ago, the rotor is going to want to rotate to line up with that magnetic field that we create. So what that means is if we keep rotating the stator's magnetic field, the rotor is just going to be chasing it like a carrot on a stick. We try to keep the angle between the rotor's magnet and the stator's magnetic field at 90 degrees because this is the angle that makes the rotor try hardest to align, meaning it produces the maximum torque. To maintain this angle at 90 degrees, we need to know the exact position of the rotor at all times, and we measure that using an encoder. In EVs, this is often, but not always, something called a resolver, which is a very interesting little piece of kit. So now that we know the theory, it's time to see it in action. So here I have my trusty pointer or screwdriver. It's got a rotating end and what I've done is I've stuck a strong magnet onto it and I've put tape on so you can see the north and the south poles. I've also connected our stator to an inverter so there is now an alternating three phase current passing through our windings which should be in theory creating a rotating magnetic field inside our bore. So let's see what happens if I put my screwdriver in there. Look at that, it's rotating. How cool is that? Because the two magnetic fields are aligned, permanent magnet motors are what is called synchronous, which basically just means the rotor is going to be spinning at the same speed as our rotating magnetic field. And again, I can prove that by speeding up our magnetic field. So we're constantly moving this magnetic field so that the rotor chases it. The speed that we move this magnetic field determines how fast our rotor spins and therefore how fast our car goes. The strength of the magnetic field determines the torque, or how much force there is pushing the car along the road. If I reduce the strength of this rotating magnetic field enough, there won't be enough torque for the rotor to rotate. But this would never really happen with a proper motor, because the magnetic coupling between the rotor and the stator would be a lot better than this. Because of the electrical resistance of all of this copper, the stator can get quite hot when running at high torque. To keep this under control, we need cooling on the stator. In the case of this motor, that is just some ribbing along the top, paired with a fan at the back to blow air through. While that may be sufficient for a water pump, which is what this motor's from, motors in electric vehicles need to achieve far higher power density, so they will almost exclusively use water cooling to take the heat away to a radiator, a bit like a combustion engine car. The rotor also heats up, but as you can imagine, this is a lot harder to cool because it's rotating. Some very fancy motors pump coolant through the shaft to remove this heat. And while this can lead to dramatic increase in power density, it's not really cost effective so it's very unusual to see on road cars. It's also particularly challenging to make reliable enough because of the seals that you have to have onto the rotating shaft. So that was a super speedy look at super speedy motors. Thanks for watching and goodbye.